how to reduce people's thank you Sorry. for the recording um if anybody doesn't want to be on the recording or you want to change your name to not be uh easily identified we have our recordings for all the previous five sessions on our now really quite useful resource page i must say i'm a bit biased but well, you know well done team sell fuel poverty but we've got lots of resources and and recordings of all of our previous sessions which have covered everything from the kind of fuel poverty and energy advice 101 right through to everything you need to think about before you do an energy advice project or a deep dive on funding and actually hearing some from funders directly um, or how to choose what sort of advice intervention that you and your group or your organization could start or enhance another service that you offer um, because we've got a quite a small group today what would I'd really like to do is actually have just hear from who you are and what brings you here today what interested you about the event just a quick intro, intro. so if anybody would like to pop their uh, mic off and give a quick 30 second intro I'd love to know who's who we've got with us today would anybody like to volunteer to go first i will because i'm new hi everyone um i'm stacy ennis i'm actually the volunteer manager for the huntington's disease association so not london specific but national so this is still quite relevant um we are looking at how we can provide potential welfare grants to to the people we work with who are affected by huntington's disease I've been sent on a merry dance, to be quite honest, but I could pick that up later. But anyway, yeah, I've, uh, one of my colleagues forwarded this and I thought this looks useful. So alongside my volunteering, I think I'm kind of picking up sort of um, the cost of living and energy and how we can support our our members. So that's me. Oh, great. Good to have you with us, Stacey, and welcome to this really confusing not shouldn't be but it is a landscape of energy giving energy advice in the community who else would like to introduce themselves i'll go okay. ahead all right okay shall i go <laughs> yeah thank you um so my name is katie yeah i actually work at the um community lottery fund the national community lottery fund i'm not here representing them i'm doing this in my lunch hour to bolster my own knowledge i am a funding officer so i'm allowed to say that um i don't represent them in any way shape or form i do have managerial permission to be here but fuel poverty it's a massive issue um it's in the public domain that the applications along those lines have gone up um so that's well known and i just want to bolster my knowledge to see what's out there how can we help and if i can feed that into our policy development team so like i said it's my own knowledge i think i've made that very clear but yeah i just wanted to get more information and the uh, sessions previously have been very well reviewed so i thought i'd come along oh well absolutely likely full to have you here and if you wanted a separate chat at any point if you've got specific more general questions that's an oxymoron well done Alex then just drop me a line at alex at energies.co.uk and I'll see if I can help i would be like delighted to um who else okay my turn then I'll be quick hi I'm Chris Tuff um I run a company called Mill Hill Betsang CIC um we're proposing to build uh social housing um, sustainable social housing locally along St. Ports on the coast here and following the mining shafts uh, for obvious reasons. Um, so we're talking to people at the moment, um, the coal authority for one, obviously, um, but also for the sins, I'm a, a community advocate uh, where um, we go to the uh, mining clubs to give free advice um, how to sustain their own homes, um, benefit checks. Uh, so that takes a little bit of time um, because I am uh, one of the old Bay's energy champions of a ah. few years ago. But I'm redoing my training again with support from um, Sussex because they ah. just be funded. Um, so I'm talking to Kate next week on how we can get it moving even more so. Get the get the advice out there for the people. That's what it's about. Brilliant! Oh, yeah. excellent! Yeah, Kate's one of my favourite people. You'll be good 
working with her. Yes. Don't you worry, Chris. Great. Who else would like to introduce themselves? Hi there, I'm Caroline Hastings and I'm a project officer in Aberdeenshire, Scotland, so a little bit distance from you all, but I attended one of your previous sessions, which was fantastic, but scary that we're all just facing the same issues wherever we are in the country. And I'm actually currently through in the midway through a project with um, Aberdeenshire Council housing tenants and their lived experience of pure poverty. So again, a little bit similar to others in the, trying to up my own knowledge and make sure I'm up to speed with things, but also just, um, yeah, just, just that learning experience over lunch really. So thank you very much. Oh, great to have you, Caroline. Who else haven't we heard from? Hi everyone. My name is Andre, uh, Y Forest District Council and my position energy performance officer and i'll be very short i just want to uh do expanding my knowledge and that's it so it's very interesting uh, for me thanks great have for you here thanks andre who else hi um my camera is off uh, sorry um i'm in a yeah i'm in a place where um, i cannot have it on i'm sorry um, but my name is Dolores. I uh, work as a financial inclusion officer and debt advisor uh, for an organization in London called Advice for Renters. And we do energy advice as part um, uh, of our service delivery. And so we, well, we are really worried, um, especially for people with prepayment meters, because People who are already in debt, uh, who weren't able to pay their bills, are being pushed, forced into prepayments, which means they will not be able to top it up all the time through winter, and they will self-disconnect inevitably. And also, uh, I'm getting a few inquiries now. Sorry, maybe I'm speaking too long, but just let me throw this one out. Um, I'm, I'm getting a few inquiries from people who actually have submitters. And uh, so they have a meter in their bed seat or in their flat that is attached to the meter that the, delivers the energy or the electricity to the property. That means they don't have an account directly with the electricity company. That means so far they haven't been able to receive the 400 pound uh, support. And there is some new legislation maybe expected to come through. Maybe they will. I don't know if they will be eligible soon. Uh, but also that means they are not able to claim the winter, sorry, the warm homes discount. And they are not able to get a few vouchers during winter if they get self-disconnected. So I would really like to be able to, I don't know, link with with maybe you or other organizations that face similar difficulties and see if I can get some more um, knowledge and maybe share information. That's it for me. Thanks. Oh, you're throwing down the gauntlet, Dolores. Let's see if we can get that covered between Thomas and myself. Thank you. Who else would like to say a quick intro? Well, you can pop it in the chat if you're feeling a bit shy. <laughs> or you can't talk. I'm, I'm happy to do a quick intro. I mean, I, I will introduce myself when I'm um, presenting, but my name's Tom Brook Villard. I'm a senior policy researcher um, in the citizen advice uh, energy policy team, working on uh, sort of vulnerability and affordability and more recently on cost of living. Um, so hopefully we'll be um, able to have some interesting conversations and learn some things from you guys today. I'm so happy to have you here, Tom. Thank you. And as there are a few new faces, just to introduce me, hi, I'm Catherine, uh, she, her, I work for Community Energy London as the coordinator. So if you have any questions, just pop me an email, I'll put them in the chat and um, I'll do my best to help you. Also with another hat on, I'm one of the directors for Croydon Community Energy and um, we've just started our first build poverty project and these sessions have really helped as well. I am not paid to say that, but so yeah, <laughs> two different hats, um, but yeah. Uh, anyone else want to say anything or shall we move on? Catherine, you put the pressure on now. I should introduce myself as well. Um, I'm a project officer for CELL and working with Alex on the Fuel Poverty Project. And my name is Lorraine. Thank you. 
Thanks, Lorraine. Oh, what a lovely mixture we have today. Thank you for attending, everybody. Well, first and foremost, I would like to thank Tom for stepping into the breach and really doing us a solid here by coming along. And he is a esteemed person in my world of by being a senior policy researcher for Citizens Advice Energy Policy Unit. But without further ado, I would like to hand over to Tom and see what he's got to tell us about this topic and then we'll be able to pick his brains with specific questions afterwards. Fantastic. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Alex. Um, and as I said before, really um, excited to be here and, and to be talking to you guys about um, what is obviously one of the most important um, and, and concerning issues of the time. Um, as I said before, I work for the Systems Advice Energy Team um, and a lot of my work since probably November or December of last year was focused um, very much on um, the cost of living crisis and the energy crisis in particular. Um, so what I'm going to I actually I've completely forgot to share my slides. So am I able to do that? Uh, I can let you do that or I can share them if you would prefer and just talk. Which would you prefer to do? Uh, maybe if you were able to share them, that would, yeah, be, sure. that would be helpful. And then, um, and then I can get less confused by all the tech. Yep. Can you all see that? I can see it. So I put another scan. Perfect. Um, yeah. So today. Um, over the next kind of 10 minutes, I will uh, give a very, very brief over to, overview of um, the energy policy team at Citizens Advice and what we do. Um, I'm then going to talk through um, some of the kind of key trends that we're seeing um, in our data about the cost of living crisis um, and how that's um, affecting our clients and kind of people on the ground more broadly. Um, and then I'm going to try and talk a little bit about what government support is already um, on offer to support people. Um, it's probably a topic that you all know well, but, but probably useful to go back over. Um, and then finally, I'm going to end by thinking about like where the gaps in that support are and, 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 and possibly who, who will need more support over the coming winter um, and beyond as well. Um, so I'm afraid it's, it's probably a fairly... Um, Maudlin uh, presentation, but um, hopefully we can have a, a lively discussion about it afterwards. Um, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, uh, actually, I think we can kind of skip this one over because it's more of a, a, a an overview of, of, of the Citizens Advice um, organization as a whole, and I think everyone's probably fairly aware of that. So if we skip to the next one. Um, so hopefully this is a little bit more useful for anyone um, that doesn't know what Citizens Advice do in the energy space. Um, I think sometimes it can be a little bit strange to people that that's something that we focus so strongly on. Um, so we're the official consumer body for energy, uh, which means we use research and evidence from the people um, and micro businesses who contact our advice services every day. Um, and we sort of use that uh, data and information um, to understand those problems, um, but also advocate for policy change to um, improve the lives of, of the people who come to us and, and energy consumers more broadly. Um, and as you can see, there's a kind of a bit of an infographic on the left hand side here, which is kind of supposed to indicate the kind of virtuous circle of how our advice service um, feeds into our advocacy, which also then feeds back into our advice service. Uh, if we go to the next slide. Uh, actually, let's skip this one as well. And let's definitely skip this one. <laughs> um, oh, I lost it. Oh, here we go. Um, so, um, yeah, I think, actually, could you skip forward? I think I've jumbled them up slightly. Yeah. Uh, so just to set a little bit of context, which I think, again, everyone is already aware of, um, but I think it is always kind of useful um, to remember just how much the context has changed in terms of energy energy prices um, over the last uh, sort of two, two, three years. 
So if we think about like back in January 2019, um, we had the energy price capping in place. Um, we saw a little bit of variation from uh, six months to six months about how that was calculated. Um, but in general, we were seeing prices kind of hovering around the £1,000 a year for an average energy consumer mark. Um, then we sort of start to hit the, the start of uh, this year um, and uh, a sort of confluence of factors, um, not least the, the war in Ukraine, start to see those prices really shoot up. Um, so we saw it go up to 1,971 back in April. Um, and that's when uh, we start to, the government starts to really consider like intervening seriously in that market to bring prices down. Um, the where, where these two graphs bifurcate is um, is the introduction of the energy price guarantee, which is, is, is going to be setting average, crucially average, and not everybody's total bills to £2,500 um, from April and then from uh, October, that is going to go up to £3,000. Um, I think it's worth saying, like, while that is a very needed intervention, um, we are already, if we if we look back, that's well over. Um, we're already well over kind of twice what they used to be um, and three times uh, what they used to be as we as we approach around the 3,000 mark. Um, and that's in the context of kind of slipping living standards and uh, years of austerity um, before that as well. Um, if we just click back to the previous slide. So something that we've been trying to do more of uh, at Citizens Advice is to be a little bit more open with our data. So I think one of the strengths that we have is um, we have all of these offices, we have our advice line, we have our website. Um, which gives us a really raw insight into the kinds of problems that people are coming to us with. Um, and we get that in a really real time way. Um, so what we've done is set up this citizens advice cost of living dashboard, uh, which is designed to give people um, a real insight into um, what the cost of living crisis is like for people on the ground. Um, and that's something you can access online. We, we, we access, uh, we host that publicly and we also do monthly uh, events where we talk through that data as well. So I'm sort of happy to share that uh, link and the link to the event with anyone who's interested after this. Um, if we could skip forward and then skip forward again. Uh, oh no, sorry, skip one back. Um, so this graph um, is probably, if I'm going to emphasize any of them, probably the one that I think is, is, is most important to think about. Um, what this shows is the cumulative number of people um, who have come to our services um, who have been unable to top up their prepayment meters each year. Um, and, and on the whole, that is because they can't afford to do so. Um, if we look here at the uh, yellow line, uh, that is 2022, um, as you can see, it is just absolutely exploded in comparison to uh, the previous five years. Um, in fact, by the end of October this year, we've seen more people who were unable to afford to top up their prepayment meters um, than we've seen in the entirety of the five previous years combined. Um, and obviously, this I'm sure you're all aware of this, but like behind those figures are people who are sitting in the dark, people who are unable to um, to uh, heat their home, unable to cook, um, and in many cases, those are people with um, it shouldn't be, but they are. We know there are people included in that with disabilities and long-term health conditions who are seriously impacted by that. It's also worth saying that we haven't really entered the winter proper, um, so there are huge concerns about that. Um, increasing uh, across January and February as well. Um, if we skip over to the next one. Uh, this is a very similar graph, but I think uh, one thing that this, I guess this graph shows fairly neatly. Um, so this isn't a cumulative graph, it's more a month by month graph, but um, I think it shows how much these um, increases in, in prepay disconnections track along those um, energy price cap increases. So we can see the 1,039 cap 
uh, and then the 2001 and then 2560 cap as well. So it's, there's a very clear correlation between um, wholesale energy prices and people being unable to heat their homes. Uh, if we move on to the next one. Um, this is another graph which I think would is, is really important as a, as a take home. Uh, so this is the cumulative number of people we've helped with crisis support each year. Um, so that is people who come to us either uh, who need um, referrals to food banks um, or referrals to other forms of um, crisis, uh, charitable crisis support. Um, again, the yellow line here is uh, 2022. Um, as you can see, we've seen, I think by, um, yeah, I can't remember, but as you can see, it's just starkly above um, all of the other years combined. Um, and it doesn't uh, it doesn't show a significant um, indication that that's going to slow down. Uh, if we move to the next one, uh, this is an interesting one, I think, as well. Uh, slightly different to the other graphs, but um, obviously one of the sort of defining features of the UK housing stock compared to the rest of Europe is is um, is the really poor energy efficiency levels. And that's a particular huge problem in, in, in the private rented sector as well. Um, and as we, something that we've really discovered is that as people really start to find that they don't have any flex in their budget month to month, uh, more and more people are contacting us to try and think about other ways of, of, of heating their home and making ends meet um, in, in order to bring those costs down. Um, again, that yellow line is 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 twenty twenty two, and then and then the line below is twenty twenty one. So I think it's a it's a real indicator of like the steps people are turning to in order to make ends meet and heat their homes, but also um, a good indication of how important a, a, a well led energy efficiency scheme would be in addressing fuel poverty. Um, go to the next graph. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about this one, and we have got, I, I really do urge people to look at the um, data dashboard itself, because I think you can really have a play around with it. And for example, on this graph, you can select by um, other groups. So people of color, um, uh, women, men, um, uh, et cetera, to, to get a sense of this. But what we've done in this graph is, is compare um, how many people come to us with cost of living relations related issues or not cost of living related issues um, and I think something that's really sort of stark in this graph which is particular to this graph it's not the case with any of the other demographics we looked at um, is that actually people with disabled um, or long-term health conditions um, are now coming to us with more cost of living related issues than any other um, issues at all um, which I think is, is, is something definitely worth reflecting on. Um, if we head over to the next graph, oh no, not the next graph. Uh, so now I'll just sort of run through the existing cost of living support that's been announced so far. Um, this will be, a, I think, a bit of a whistle stop um, because people are probably fairly aware, but I think it's useful to cover. Um, I think you need to click through for it to, yeah, if you just want to click through until it. Oh, I'm back. Yeah. Cool. So, so far, um, and, and a lot of this uh, was announced in April, no, in May, sorry, um, uh, the government announced a £650 payment uh, for people on low income households um, on means of benefits uh, and a £300 payment for uh, all pensioners um, on top of a £150 payment for people in disability, with disability benefits. Um, another thing that they did was uh, replace, well, basically introduced the Energy Bill Support Scheme, um, which was previously a much less generous and repayable grant, which is now a £400 grant to um, all households. Um, we can talk about this a bit afterwards, but there are lots of problems with the way that that scheme is administered, particularly for people on legacy food payment meters um, and also people on alternative fuels. Um, and they also extended the uh, household support fund. Um, and then the other decision that was made, uh, initially the energy price cap uh, guarantee was going to be in place. 
um, from uh, October of this year for two years uh, at the rate of 2,500 pounds. Um, as you know, that has now been um, reduced to 3,000 pounds from April. Uh, so moving on to the autumn statement, a few sort of relevant headlines are um, the very welcome decision to upgrade benefits in line with inflation. Um, it's worth saying that was an initial uh, commitment from government that was then uh, gone back on, but they have now agreed to do that. That will make a huge difference for lots of people on um, benefits who were facing a kind of 10 to 11 percent um, real term income in their income going into the next year. Uh, as I said before, the uh, decision has been made to set the EPG at a higher rate of £3,000, um, but to a certain extent to undercut that, they announced an additional £900 payment for people in receipt of certain benefits. Um, so there's lots there, um, and some of it obviously will be a huge lifeline for lots of people. Um, but now if we skip forward to the next um, slide. There are definitely quite a few concerns going forward, which I'm sure you'll be very um, aware of. Um, so I think the first thing to first and quite honor, uh, obvious thing to say is that even with the announced support, um, people are going to have a really, really difficult winter. Um, and, and lots of people are facing more than double the energy pr prices that they were facing this time last year. Um, and these are people who are already struggling to balance their budgets. Um, and I think that applies not only to low income people, but increasingly to middle income, income people as well. Um, one thing I think we're really concerned about is, is for people on low incomes who aren't in receipt of benefits. So I think if you just miss out on that £900 um, additional payment, um, that, that's a huge problem for people. Um, and there are these stories already about people who are on um, zero hour contracts who because of the way that it's calculated, like, and when it has been calculated, I've just missed out on that support. Um, so I think there's a lot more work needed to think about how we get um, the right support to people who are missing out on those payments, but will still be struggling over the winter. Um, it, yeah, a sort of related point is kind of around um, people on high usage. So that's something we're trying to look into a little bit more. Um, there are lots of people for many reasons who are on low incomes, but also high usage. I think something, uh, one group that comes to mind are people who have long term health conditions or disabilities, which mean that they require equipment that uses more energy um, or spend more time in the house. Um, I think there are huge concerns about whether how those people will be affected over this winter and beyond. Um, other things like real term cut to local housing allowances are real concern and something that we were disappointed to see. Um, I think particularly in this kind of growing rent crisis, I think that's going to hit a lot of people really hard. Um, the final thing to say is there are some kind of ambitions statements that came out of the autumn statement um, on energy efficiency, and we're really like pleased to see that. Um, I think a lot more detail um, and potentially a lot more money will be needed before we can make a decision on, on how much of a high impact that will um, sort of have in the long term. Um, final slide, please. And the final slide is just any questions. Yeah, so sorry, that was a very rushed um, whistle stop tour through our data um, and a little bit about um, the support that is available and, and the challenges ahead. Um, but I don't know if there's time for any questions. Um, but if there are, I'm happy to say there's now. Oh, that was fantastic. Tom, that got my appetite going. Oh, there's a lunchtime pun in there somewhere. That was brilliant. Um, thank you so much. Uh, got so many questions, but I feel it would be very churlish of me not to open the floor and see if there are any questions from any here. Let's anything in the chat, or if anyone would like to pop their mic on and ask Tom directly. You want me to take, I'm, in, I'm also happy to take a couple of them. So there will be a link to the dashboard. Uh, let me just find that and I'll share that now. Ah, Delors, would you like to come in with the, the thing that you came with a specific question 
to see if Tom has had any experience about that. About, I, I don't know if, if, if they are really called secondary meters or uh, submitters, but yeah, we have people who, uh, who actually, well, they have a meter installed by the landlord that is, doesn't have um, um, MNPN number, I think you call it. Well, they, they are not uh, linked to the supplier. Mm. So they are not, not they, they can't have fuel vouchers. They, they are not able to claim the, the warm home discount, even if I, one of my clients is on pension credit. And is, um, yeah, well, uh, at the moment he's doing well because he's received all this money that is, um, you know, been paid now, but that money is going to run out. Um, and he spends at the moment 90, 90 pounds a month on electricity. So imagine when, when it gets colder and is, you know, someone in their late, late 60s. Uh, and, and, and anyway, I have more clients. So, so how is there anything that can help um, them? Um, yeah, no, thank you. Um, is it Dolores? Yes. Well, the other thing I was thinking is like, how can it be? I mean, these, I guess these meters are, are perfectly legal, but um, I, I, I'm wondering whether this is so unregulated. And so this elderly gentleman I was telling you about, for example, he's trying to convince his landlord to change the meters and to have each bed seat to have a, a, a you know, a, a direct a proper meter, direct connection with the uh, uh, with the electricity company, but apparently that's going to cost thousands. So I suspect the landlord at the moment, you know, because this man is putting so much pressure, the landlord at the moment is kind of saying, "Oh yeah, yes, I will do it," but whether they will or not. So these people are trapped in a situation where they are in, in fuel poverty, they can't get help, and they basically can't get out of it. Yeah, no, I, um, thanks for raising that question, because I think it is a massive problem. Um, and it's actually something that I was thinking about yesterday, um, which was a case of a tower block where um, the meter itself was a non-domestic meter, but then it was submetered through to all of the residents. Um, so I think this has been a problem before. Um, but I think increasingly is the problem in the context of, I'm not aware of the warm home discount problem, so that'd be interesting. Anything that you know about that um, and you can share with me would be really helpful. Yes, um, he's already think, he's already tried to claim it, well, to ask if he would be entitled. He's been told no. I went to the, to the government website to check if he's entitled. And the first question it asks you is if the bill is on your name or your partner's name. So it gives you the option to say the bill is on my landlord's name. And as soon as you click there, you are not entitled to, to even apply for it. So, yeah. Right. OK, that is a that is a let me make a note of that, because that's something I would definitely I'm sure it is on the radar, but it would be something for me to um, raise with. Sorry, I'm always slow. Like if I don't write it down, I won't remember. Um, would hey, you no share worries, your email Tom, address? <laughs> But, but the other the other um, question which I think is relevant is is we definitely have experienced and there are known problems for people on submeters receiving the energy bill support scheme um, so that theoretically should be passed um, on to your landlord should be passing that on to um, anyone on a submeter. Um, I think the problem with it is, is if it's being split out to different submeters, um, the way it would be all automatically reach the landlord um, would be that they would just receive the kind of £67 a month um, amount, which obviously isn't the amount that should then be passed on to people. people. Um, there is a scheme called the Alternative um, Payment Scheme um, and, and a pot of money that's available. Um, where people should be able to apply to get that money if you're not receiving it automatically. Um, but do you know how how people can apply for that? Or I think those details haven't been released yet. Yeah, or... you're exactly right. So, like, okay. shockingly, shockingly, two months into the scheme, we still don't have details about how those people can access that. Um, so, I'm sorry, I can't give you any more details than that, except that that is it's a known problem and and it is being raised with Bayes. 
um, uh, the Department of Business and Energy Strategy. Yeah. And um, they are trying to work it out, um, but it is pretty shocking that two months into the scheme, um, that still hasn't been worked out. Um, so I wish I had more information on that, um, but I'm afraid I don't. If if people are on a sub meter where it's just them and their landlord, um, so it's just one person and their landlord, um, then the landlord should be automatically passing through um, the reduction um, to them, and that should be fairly um, automatic. Um, there isn't, there didn't used to be a legal requirement on landlords to do that, um, but they are, are or have already passed legislation to make that a legal requirement. Um, but what I'm not sure about is, 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 is the route to recourse if you think your landlord isn't doing that. Um, I, so uh, it, it is online. I found that because one of my clients uh, is only, the, the meter is supplying the landlord and her flat, and the landlord is refusing to, to share the, the, the money, basically. So you know, uh, what yeah. I'd like to do is, um, if I can just share my screen, sure. um, can I share my screen? Oh, two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to do a bit of PR for the another part of the citizens' advice. Uh, you can now. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, my glamorous assistant. I feel like Paul Daniel. Uh, sorry, my colleague, not assistant. Um, <laughs> this this slide from this presentation I've got, which is essentially, can everyone now? Oh, I'll remove. So the the extra help can unit. Can you just put it in a... presentation mode, please, so we oh, can see it properly? Now you're asking. Gosh, just... I thought I'd done quite well pulling it up on the you have. on the hoof. Just put slideshow at the top. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's got stupid animation on. So to get specific help with any complicated cases that you might have in the community, there is a not to be shared with clients. This is for caseworkers. And um, there's that free that free uh, local rate number there, um, which is different from the consumer advice line that can then, once they've assessed, can might put you through to the you've got a complex case or a billing thing or something that relates to citizen advice being the statutory body for consumers on this stuff. But for these complicated sorts of advice situations you have, Dolores, rather than going further into it now, I could signpost you to this resource and you can get somebody to work with you on this um, and help on a more detailed level. So um i can transpose yeah, this on to a couple of slides that we can share after the after the session um thank you okay any any other questions to thomas be, sorry tom before i share two other resources that i'd like to bring in before we hear from flavia can I just ask, and I'm not sure if Tom, you're the right person, but I, we've been, the, our organisation has been trying to source fuel, fuel vouchers so we can actually hand them out as part of our welfare grant in house. Now, I understand that you can buy fuel vouchers and hand them out to people on prepayment meters, but I've been having tr difficulty trying to source fuel vouchers. That we can hand to people um, who are not on prepayment meters. Um, so I'm just wondering, do they exist? Um, thanks, Stacey. Yeah, I I'm happy to take that one away. My because I can't I, I wouldn't want to say something that isn't correct. I think they are only usable for people on fuel on prepayment meters. Um, I am happy to check with that one and get back to you. Um, I, I would back I... you up on that position, Tom, but from a kind of practitioner more than policy point of view, because, um, yeah, you can go to places like Charis and buy them, but to get them funded, there are, you can go to Fuel Bank and apply to them, you can go to local authorities, which might fund specific areas through their household support schemes, but it depends on what they decide to do locally. Um, there's nothing nationally apart from what you can do, especially if you have a charitable status or if you don't work in partnership um, with a charity 
that you can put an, a project together and ask for funding to have fuel vouchers offered through the energy redress funding scheme i think they're next open in january so and what so you could also work with a local community energy national or regional or local body to bring that kind of energy flavor in if you're kind of lighter on that side so you can work in partnership in that way as well and that's another way of getting them funded as well but you're right I've come across I keep coming back to this over the last five years because lots of people are also struggling and they don't have prepayment meters but they kind of get missed out because they can't get that voucher thing so if something could be uh created to help them in that way that would be very cool good point yeah, thank so you Stacey just we've, we've got our own funding we're prepared to fund it ourselves ah, okay set up a Cheris account they're really yeah. easy yeah, okay. I think there's I a slight think, um, admin fee for each of them, which is like one pound twenty five or something for every if you're doing du dual fuel, that's normally between thirty five or forty nine pounds generally. Um, and they also administer some of the energy trust uh, funds as well. So they're kind of quite good. And what's the other one called? Aurelia. Aurelia? Aurelia. Aurelia. Oh gosh, excuse my pronunciation. No problem. Thank okay, you. great, good. Yes, it's a complicated maze, all of this stuff, isn't it? Um, there's just two uh, resources I'd like to share, but rather than go through them in on the screen, I'm uh, just going to... The other two... Oh, that's... Oh, shouldn't let me drive. Okay, so first of all, there's a, a scope specific for people with disabilities and long-term health conditions energy support project which is purely phone based but they are a lot more uh, generous with their time understanding about particular health issues or disabilities that could affect people accessing this sort of service um, and they've got this particular initiative which you can get um, advice and support through just through on their website there um, and that might um, help take care of some of the aspects that you might be able to then support them with the other stuff on and I'd just like to draw people's attention to they had a big launch apparently in Trafalgar Square this week under the cost of living things by the mayor but there's a new website and phone line number Pan London so you can ring up from wherever you are and then get specific advice based on your borough because annoyingly all the different councils have different things and some might be available in one and not another there's a tool you could either use with a client or for yourself to see what it's like on the website this is run by EST the energy savings trust um, and you can go through that and um, get information on everything from warm homes discount they've got a big focus on accessing the warmer homes funding which is the DLA's money uh, grants for um, energy saving items which Flavia is about to talk about with us um, but there's a there's a 0800 number or you can use the tool on the website and the num 0800 number is Monday to Friday nine to five kind of coverage but outside of that way you can actually um, get the most of the information via uh, the the website too but there is also a um, a, a little widget where you can put in your own postcode and it will then tell you what's available and when I did it for myself the first thing that came up wasn't even the South London Healthy Homes um, advice service that's in my local area it was citizens advice and then it was the GLA's one and then my local one so there we go some more positive PR for the uh, citizens advice there so our last speaker is I'd like to hand over to Flavia to give us a whistle stop tour again of um, I think I've set you up nicely hopefully uh, with what what's going on what how could people um, what's available for people in London with uh, disabilities and health conditions? Flavia. Sorry, I, I'm going to have to um, jump off to another call. So sorry, thank you. I, thank I, you very I really much. Enjoyed, 
um, the talk over here. So, thanks. <laughs> oh, Tom. thank you so much, Tom. Positive karma points and gold stars coming at you, and really, really interesting. I'm going to go and have a deeper dive on the data dashboard after this. Nice one. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. So I'm just here to talk about the, the Mayor of London's Warmer Homes program um, because it's 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 last kind of final push before um, yeah before it closes and opens again in another incarnation. Um, so the Mayor of London's Warmer Homes program. Um, for, let me just stop for a second. Uh, I work for Southeast London Community Energy, and we're a co-op in um, Southeast London that. Uh, have solar arrays um, as well as provide uh, fuel poverty advice um, and we've been uh, brought on by the delivery partner of the GLA uh, retrofit works to help with voluntary uh, sector and community engagement with the with the warmer homes program. Um, so I'm just going to quickly tell you about the Warmer Homes program, what the measures are that are available, and then um, just some of the questions uh, that come up for um, more vulnerable uh, sections of society when engaging with the grant. So the Warmer Homes program was launched in May of last year, and it closes um, in March, March 31st of this coming year, and that's all the work needs to be completed by that date. So uh, in reality, the grant kind of closes in mid-January. So we've essentially got two months to get um, lots of applications in. And uh, this grant is for uh, households in London, for uh, owner occupiers or for private rental situations. And um, the occupiers of the buildings need to be in receipt of a qualifying benefit, which have changed recently to only be means tested benefits, unfortunately, um, or be a low income household. And then um, the, the building itself, the home itself must be um, energy and efficient. So EPC rated D, E or F. And uh, there's between 5,000 and 25,000 pounds available to each applicant um, to install measures in their homes to uh, raise the EPC rating of their, their home, either into a C or, oh, my computer has decided to stop charging. There we go. Um, either EPC uh, C or to move up two bands um, into, like, let's say if you're a G to bring you up into an E, if you're an F to a D. Um, and there are a number of measures that are available and uh, they're offered together as a, a package. So um, they include loft insulation, cavity wall insulation, flat roof insulation, double glazing, secondary glazing, replacement windows and doors. Uh, solid wall insulation inside and outside, boiler replacements. And if you do know anybody who lives in London whose boiler is broken or on the fritz, regardless of which EPC rating they have, they may have an A, B or C, encourage them to apply for this grant because the moment your boiler is broken, you, you your EPC rating is really low. So it's a really um, juicy little uh, tidbit there to if you want to, to replace your boiler and it's really on its last legs or is broken to, to get your application in. So really pushing boilers at the moment. Also heat pumps, uh, electric heating improvements, heating cylinders, new central heating systems, um, ventilation, there's some money for enabling works. So for example, if an elderly person needs help clearing their loft in order to get new loft insulation in place um, or they, they have a bit of money for those enabling works. Um, smart technologies, so meters and controls, renewable technologies like solar panels, uh, inverters and batteries, and low energy lighting, as well as ventilation improvements. So it's a pretty sweet offer that's available. Um, but uh, if you know anyone who could benefit from this, who is on a qualifying benefit, um, or who is uh, low income, uh, which is 
on average about twenty thousand pounds after tax and after um, housing costs for a single single person, and then it kind of the the number varies upwards depending on what your household composition is. Encourage them to apply because it's an, an incredible offer. Um, and if you want to find out more about it, you can visit uh, warmerhomes.london, and the details of the applications are there. And if it, you know anybody who would benefit from this and needs a bit of support, um, I'm going to put my email into the chat and you can forward them on to me and I can put them in touch with either one of our um, energy advisors at Celsi or I can forward you on to energy advisors that are dealing with the warmer homes program um, across London that's local to your local to your borough. Um, and part of the part of the big question around this grant is how to engage people who usually wouldn't hear about the grant, who uh, may struggle to engage with it. Um, wh what are the supports that can be avail made available to them in order to uh, help them along through the grant? And we've been piloting a program called the Warmer Homes Advocate at CELSI. Um, which is mirroring work that we've done for a number of years and we've been engaging organizations across London to provide a hand holding service to people that do need a bit more support um, to, to move through through it that's either just helping them with the paperwork or it's uh, helping them understand what's on offer so that they are able to better uh, engage in the process um, to, you know to reassure them when they think something might be a scam or to to call it out when it's a scam <laughs> so um, and an a... organization can contact you to have little training sessions as well can't they is that that's the same thing or different yeah so as part of that there's a training offer but that training is also available to anybody um and is also like we're using it as an advocacy tool now as well nice. uh simply because the timelines that have been generated for um by base for this project has meant that there are sections of society that have been left behind because um, there hasn't mm -hmm. been the time to actually mobilize those communities well enough. So um, I'm working Quite. with yeah, Inclusion London to, to develop um, recommendations for when, when these um, grants are rolled out, how to engage with, with the deaf and disabled uh, sectors so that they can actually really uh, provide the kind of support that's needed. Same with this and the same applies across language groups as the, the often the intervention happens when it's too late for these people to actually engage with the program. Um, so for this round with this amazing offer, we're doing what we can, but also looking forward um, to make it even better for, for the next round. Um, so I'm gonna put into the chat my email if you uh, know of anybody that you think would benefit from support with this grant, and then the grant link um, if you wanna find out more about it. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Flavia. No That's worries. really useful to have that kind of synopsis of what what's available so basically however you know what was the word uh despondent or dreary or diabolical that uh tom used at the beginning of his stats and facts and graphs and it doesn't by any means fill the gap of the shortfall um that is we know that, uh, you know, Disability Rights UK, more than half of disabled people, 55% are covering, struggling to pay their bills and a third are having problem paying their rent and mortgage. They're interlinked as well as, you know, food bank increase, etc. And that's contrast with the 40% of non-disabled people and around energy and 27 on the rent kind of mortgage side. And so it really is an extra. And the, when you factor in, it often costs, what was it, £583 extra for people on with disabilities for them to live each month, um, compounded by the impacts of cold homes on people's health as it is. It's really important that we try and connect with people, especially people who are disabled and have another kind of indicator alongside dis digital inclusion or um 
language barriers and all that sort of thing so but there is help out there and it's people like us that can help join the dots and community energy groups always happy to work in partnership start new projects try innovative um uh responses to tackling this just for the last 30 seconds if you can just indulge me for one more slide while you very kindly all look at following the link that I've put in the chat for filling out our feedback form because it's a, this is our last of the six sessions and we want to know if people find these useful or interesting or if we need to improve things in some way or we can say to our funders hey look this was useful can we have some more money to do more of this sort of stuff please um so all of all of that help gratefully received um I just put this little last slide where well, I can find it there we go share um put it on before Catherine shouts at me come on go on present mode um so use the data dashboard because it really adds some power to when you're talking to potential partners funders or just to reassure people that they're not alone in struggling and not you know there's no embarrass embarrassment or stigma around this use the extra help service for anything that needs clients extra help sorry about all the typos I'm dyslexic and I didn't have time to get someone to check this how to help not just clients but friends family neighbors colleagues volunteers whoever they are Find out what's available in your local area from citizens advice, from the local council, from active community energy groups. Or if you want to start your own group, get in contact with us and we can help provide you with resources and support and signposting. And we've got a new peer mentoring program starting and a very practical one. Oh, use our um, resources on our websites and check out all of our other recordings and what have you. Or tweet me, Alex Hartley at Eco, Alex Hart Eco or the cell account or whatever your preferred means of communication is. And remind prepayment clients to check their posts for those flipping vouchers because the absolute horrible stats where people aren't filling, getting those and cashing them in. So most people don't know there's, you know, some treasure sat in all of those horrible brown envelopes and junk mail that they get. Um, so if you don't um, have, if you haven't already seen it, please fill the um, feedback form in. And I would just like to take this opportunity to say, I hope we get to do another series of this next year. Um, I always find them useful and interesting and even though I've been kicking around this space for nearly 20 years I always learn something every time so let alone people starting this journey um, of the wonderful world of the ever-changing landscape of en community energy advice it's really rewarding because we help people and planet and we need an army of us doing this stuff so wh wherever you fall on the scale keep going you're not alone and thank you so much for attending this Friday lunchtime and I hope you found this really useful and interesting and stay in touch with us because we're stronger together thanks Alex thanks, thanks everyone. everybody thanks everyone thanks everyone thank you so much bye thanks. Really bye bye thanks a lot bye